Thank you. Just a reminder for our for everyone in the press conference, as student athletes come to the table, again, uh, NCAA policy requires a mask in front of student athletes. We do have some masks over at the table if you don't have one. But again, in front of our student athletes, please mask up. Uh, no flash photography, no video recording, please silence phones. And those individuals accessing the press conference via Zoom, uh, you can use the hand feature and we'll try and get you your question uh, for our student athletes and coach. Uh, joining us, uh, Notre Dame, uh, a winner in a thrilling game, double overtime. The, the Fighting Irish will play on Friday at 4.15 against number six seed Alabama <laughs> in, in San Diego as uh, head coach Mike Bray joins us along with uh, Cormac Ryan with 16 points and uh, Paul Atkinson Jr. 26 points was 13 of 15 from the field. Uh, we start our press conference uh, with uh, Coach Bray. Uh, just a, a statement on your basketball team this evening. Well, let me start by saying happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone here. And you notice Paul's shot went in at 12.02 on St. Patrick's Day. So maybe there was a little bit of karma there. If there's a better game in the NSA tournament, I got to see it. That was an unbelievable <coughs> college basketball game. And they're really good and tough and fearless. And I'm really proud of our group because we just kept hanging in. We've grown a lot in the mental toughness area. Uh, we are gonna start with questions uh, for our student athletes and then uh, we'll get to coach, but uh, let's start in the first row here in the middle. Paul, take us through that last play, if you would. Yeah, you know, Blake, I uh, saw him driving to the rim. You know, I know he's going to go hard and try to either get a foul or, you know, make a bucket. I just wanted to follow up if it was a miss and no call. So I just saw it did. You know, I just wanted to chase after the ball, got it up, and got a good bucket. Paul, how, how important was it for you to, to play well tonight? You said coming in you wanted to bounce back 20, 26 points and 56 points in the paint. Was that a pretty good bounce back for you? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a pretty good bounce back, you know. I just wanted to battle for these guys. You know, they haven't been here. I haven't been here in a long time and potentially my last year. So I just wanted to battle. You know, a lot of people don't get this chance. For, for those asking questions, if you could, just your name and affiliation. A second row. Um, Austin Huff, Goshen News. Um, both for Cormac and Paul, I guess we'll start with Cormac. How do you try to summarize what you just, uh, what type of game you just played in right there? We got an unbelievably gritty group. We don't quit. And I think you saw that. I mean, so proud of how we played and, and battled. And our fight, man, is you can't really teach that. It's contagious. And uh, we, we got it. Yeah, you know, shout out to them. They're a really good team, like Coach Bray said. You know, we, they wanted to battle, too, and we just wanted to battle a little harder. We got, we got some buckets to go in, and we matched up, and we played. First row. Uh, John Bryce, Irish Sports Daily, for both you guys. Um, just You've played in so many games like somewhat like this throughout the year in terms of it being close, coming down to the wire. How much do those past experiences help? And then you heard Coach Bray talk about the growth and mental toughness. What do you both attribute that to? Paul, can you start? Yeah, I think Coach Bray said it more times than I can count. You know, it's a battle-tested group. We've been through a lot of tough battles. We had a couple of overtime games in the regular season. and. You know, we stuck it out a couple games. Sometimes it didn't go our way, but, you know, we know how to win games. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like Coach Bray has said this a couple times, it's like we're addicted to game situations. And, and man, it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun to be a part of. This is, is, what, this is what it's all about, man. March Madness, like, like Coach said. I mean, one of the better games I've – maybe the best game I've ever been a part of. And to do it, you know, in, in this atmosphere, on this stage, you know, it's just – it's a blessing. Well, you, we'll go to Zoom. Uh, Daniel, your, your question for, for the student-athletes. Daniel Rodriguez with Diff League with Daniel. Uh, my question is for Cormac. Um, in overtime, when the ball was tipped and you caught it, what was going through your head? Because um, I believe that that play really changed the game for you guys and, and really got you guys going for overtime and now the win. 
I mean, sometimes in, in basketball, things go your way. And look, I, I woke up this morning. I slept great. Breakfast tasted good. I got the wordle and two guesses. <laughs> so sometimes you just, you got, you got a little bit of luck of the Irish. So that ball was thrown a little too high. I grabbed it, and there was one, there was one destination in mind. So I'm, I was fortunate enough to, to make that play, and, and that was just the first of many, many plays down the stretch that this group made. So, I mean, what, what a, just, what an unbelievable game. Christopher on Zoom, uh, your question for our student athletes. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Hermitson Radio in Baltimore. Congratulations on the big uh, overtime win. Uh, just talking about Ryan Harper. What type of player is he on the court? It seemed like he was all over the place trying to find three pointers, throwing things from different parts of the uh, Ohio Valley. So just talk about, you know, Ryan Harper. Paul? Uh, yeah, no, he's, he's a really good player. He's really talented, made a lot of tough shots toward the end, as you saw. Um, you know, he's really skilled the ball and you know c controls the offense for them really well. You know, I think he's he's a really really good player wherever he ends up. Questions in the audience here for our student athletes. Let's come here to the first row, on the outside. Yeah, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN Cormac. How do you guys? Yeah, obviously a lot of adrenaline and excitement right now. But how do you guys uh, uh, just deal with the quick turnaround here before your next game? Yeah, I mean, I think soaking it in, being excited is great, but. This is a mature group, and we know what's ahead of us, and we prepared for it. We were ready for it. We came into this game packed for San Diego. So we're, uh, we're on to the next one, and, and we're fired up, and we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be ready. A couple more questions here for our student athletes. We'll go to Zoom. Uh, Tom, your question. Sure. Tom Marion with AP Radio. Paul, what's it like to score the winning basket in an NCAA tournament game? I haven't felt like that in a long time. It's it's amazing, you know. It's you know, you know, a bunch of cameras on you, a big spotlight, last game of the night. You know, it's it's amazing. That's when I got my teammates to cheer with. It's just it's just awesome. Got family up in the stands. Couldn't ask for anything better. We'll go one more question here for our student athletes uh, before we get to coach D David. Your question for the student athletes. Can you Talk about the range of emotions you guys have going on right now and, and your initial thoughts about facing Alabama. Can't wait. What he said. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Best of luck on, uh, on Friday. All right, now we'll, we'll open up the floor uh, to head coach Mike Bray. Uh, question, first row in the middle. Mike, Tom Noy, Southland Tribune. 22 years, can, can, this has to rank near the top of, of five overtime games, four overtime games, yeah. NCAA tournament games, just the swings that, that yeah. you, you went through. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, the, those, were in, uh, those were in the regular season, and, and this one's in the real thing. And to play like that and uh, to, to advance, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled and I'm really proud of our group. And they deserve it, man. They've been – just an amazing group to coach. They've chased it together since last year. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll get our legs under us by Friday afternoon, but we'll need some time to do that. Let's go to the third row on the inside. Tim Priester, Irish Illustrated, Mike, right here. This one? Yes. Uh, could you just give a synopsis of the, the matchup games that you were playing uh, throughout, especially in the second half. You know what's amazing in a game like that, and I've said this before, I can't remember some of them. There were so many big plays. Um, you know, we wanted to press and get a trap, and if we couldn't get a steal, you know, we had to foul right away, and, and we got the steal on the inbounds play, which was just an amazing play by, by Cormac. Um, of course, we couldn't get our hands on a couple – loose balls, but we had four guys diving on the floor. And it wasn't like effort, and, and all of a sudden, the one they got and dunked it, I'm like, come on. And then when Harper threw the one off the board, and he's a great player, I'm like, come on now. And, um, um, but I love what we did at the end. You know, we weren't gonna call timeout. Our guy that can get to the lane the best, we came up and had two ball screens for him, and he distorts things. He turned the corner and somebody had to help, and Paul cleaned it up great. Um, but I thought our defense in the second half was there. I was on them hard. I, you know, they had 41 at half, and they were scorching us. 
So our D was better. Let's go uh, first row, middle. Pete Byrne, WSBT. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, Mike. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned this may end up being the game of the tournament. Who knows? We'll, yeah. we'll find out over the next few days. But what does it feel like to come away victorious after a game like that? I mean, um, you know, I'm thrilled. You know, you want to walk down. I've been on both sides of this. And you talk to the Rutgers coach and congratulate them because, you know, it comes to an end quick. And I wanted to talk to some of their players because I thought I think they got a heck of a team. And they are fearless. Um, and, man, do they have some guards. Um, but, um, you know, you, you just kind of drink it in, maybe because I'm a more experienced coach. It's neat to see your kids celebrate because they've worked really hard. They dreamed advancing. They dreamed getting in the tournament. They dreamed advancing in the tournament. And to see that locker room is really cool. Second row in the middle. Austin Huff, uh, Goshen News, Mike. Um, you know, obviously Paul had a fantastic game tonight, but it seemed like that was the focal point on your offense in the first half. He had a huge first half and then obviously stepped up in second overtime. Was that, I guess, you know, the strategy in the first half there, go to him? Probably. We felt we could throw it into him and, and he could score in the low post, and, um, and, and he did. And then, you know, for a while there, we liked the matchup as Nate as the only big guy because when he ball screens, they had, a, you know, they had to make a decision. And... That, you know, as far as helping off of him. And we had some amazing drives after some movement. I mean, we really drove it well. Um, and then we came back to two big guys to finish the game. And, you know, thank God for long timeouts because you're in there with your staff kind of debating and, and eventually I got to make the call, right? My butt's on the line. Just a couple questions here left for Coach. Uh, we'll go in the front row. Coach, you leave on Whitaker with ABC 57. Coach, you talked about Many a times how a win here can springboard you in the rest of the tournament. Is this a type of win that can pretty much rocket launch you, you know, yeah. the rest of this March Madness tournament? Did UCLA win in overtime last year against Michigan State in this game? All right, you know, so, I mean, I Sunday night at my house, I said we're going to try and channel UCLA. And then, you know, talk about coachable guys, huh? You know, and, and uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, and I'm damn sure going to convince them over the next 48 hours or 36 that, it's our time. Mike, John Bryce, Irish Sports Daily. And Nate's play, especially off the bench, and, and the aggression that he showed at times in the second half. How important was that? How much do you think maybe some of the other guys fed off of that? Yeah. I'm really proud of him, man. He's, uh, he, he has really grown. And on this stage, um, this was a new stage for these seniors. Um, Nate, Dane, Prentice especially. And I thought they delivered. You know, I, I was thinking to myself, can they deliver? They delivered in the regular season. Can they deliver? I'm, I'm really proud that they delivered and were ready to roll. Yeah, and I guess big picture, that would be my next question. How important, you talked about not only getting back here, but advancing here. Yeah. So, so how big is this statement? What does it mean? Well, to win a game and to turn, you know, I don't care. Anytime you win a game in this thing, it's huge. And, you know, again, we're going to, we're going to talk, we talked about, I, my quote was, let's use Dayton as a springboard. And I will continue to say that uh, for the next five hours in the air to San Diego. <laughs> Coach, outstanding win. Thank you. Congratulations. Best of luck on Friday. Uh, a note to the media, we did have that power outage, and power was out at the Hyatt. Yeah, the, it was good. It was good. But, but with that said, there is power back at the Hyatt. The, the power has been restored at the hotel. Again, for some of the media that are coming in, uh, in front of our student athletes, NCAA policy is uh, to have a mask and, and when, when student athletes are up here. We have mass on that table, but again, we, we appreciate your cooperation.
All right, at this time, we introduce the uh, Rutgers Scarlet Knights as uh, Caleb McConnell, closest to me, Ron Harper Jr. Uh, in the middle with Geo Baker, and then on the end is uh, the head coach, Steve Peichel. Coaches, we start our press conference, just a statement on your basketball team here this evening. Tough one tonight. Um, I love, I love my team. Uh, they've been a special group. Uh, we had an unbelievable season. I mean, a historic run actually. And these guys here, you know, turned this program around. And I said to them in the locker room, I wish I could coach them forever. This group has 30 years of coaching. Just a special group. And you saw them today. I mean, they fought. And that's what they're made of. They really are. I mean, it was just a tough game, tip of the hat. N Notre Dame was one possession better. They're, they're a really good team. Obviously, Coach Bray is a terrific coach. I congratulate them. But, uh, you know, this group has been unbelievable for three years, um, three straight NCAA tournaments. You know, I just wish it would n never end. These guys have given everything, you know, to our program. and. Uh, they deserve to continue to play, but uh, no, it's tough. It's just a tough, you know, tough night, you know, for us after playing the way we played and fought the whole time. But uh, they were one possession better. We uh, open up the floor now for questioning for our student athletes. Let's start in the back. Zach Brazil, New York Post. Geo, the end of regulation, you had that shot there kind of after it came up short like so you kind of grabbed your your head and kind of I guess just frustrated that you had the chance to end it there yeah I just thought I got a good look um you know I've made that shot a couple times in my career so um felt like it was going in came up a little short For first row yeah Jerry Carino from Gannett New Jersey guys uh any of you can answer this any or all uh what, what was it like to play in a game of that epic nature? And, and, and what are the emotions right now of everything you've accomplished and to have this, this, uh, this run you know, finish like this in this crazy fashion? It's a lot of pain right now. Um, you know, we've been through some real battles. You know, us three, uh, Luke, you know, everybody on the team, Ralph. Um, you know, it's just it's a lot of pain right now. I don't even really know what to say. I think uh, Caleb said it best in the locker room, you know, just telling these guys to cherish this moment, you know, cherish college basketball, um, you know, because it feels like we were just freshmen yesterday. Um, you know, we got a special brotherhood now that's never that's never going to change. It's never going to end. Um, just a lot of emotions right now, but playing in that game was, you know, special. That's what March is about. You know, we just came up short. What are the third row? Steve Politi from NJ.com. Uh, just for Ron and Gio, wh what were the thoughts at the, at the very end? I mean, just to, to participate in this game and just to have it come down to the wire like that, did, were you stunned? Were you for? How do you feel? And, and uh, I mean, it was just a, a great game. You know, we came up a little bit short. I mean, like the emotions at the end, it was just heartbreaking to see it all unfold like that, you know. Uh, the people next to me up here, we, we sacrificed a whole lot to get where we are today. And for it to come down for them like that it's just it's just upsetting it's, it's devastating it's heartbreaking it's all the above so yeah Craig Epstein from the night report a question for everybody back-to-back -back years going out in such a heartbreaking fashion what does that say about the NCAA tournament <coughs> you know it's March Madness you know that's how that's how it goes down every year you know there's games just like just like that night in and night out and that's what makes it so special you know it just sucks to be on the <coughs> on the wrong end of it Sports. Caleb, it's your hometown. Uh, you had a big first half. Just talk about the emotions and, and playing here and everything that just happened. Uh, of course, it was a very emotional game, just coming back home and being able to play in front of friends and family, which I want to thank them for coming out. But uh, it, it, it wasn't even about me tonight, honestly. It was just, it was just more, more about our team. Um, of course, they wanted to win for us and for me, but um, it was, like I said, it's very emotional. Uh, we were obviously very upset. We came on the wrong end of it, 
But um, I mean, it's just it, um, uh, as you see, we're very emotional now, and it's just it's just sad that we had to end it this way. Um, I feel like we built so much. Just take basketball, take statistics, and all that stuff out the window. Just just the stuff we did here, just the brotherhood we built, the friendships we built with each other. It's just it's gonna last forever, but it just it just sucks it had to end this way. But everything has come to an end. But I know, and I'm just I'm just glad that I was able to do it with these guys because I mean these guys are amazing. Our our whole team, like we, we transfers or whatever, um, just just from 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 top to bottom, man. So we are, we're just we're just a a good group of kids. And um, like I said, it, it just wasn't about me tonight. Um, even though my team wanted to win for me, obviously since I'm back home. But uh, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than basketball, and and like I said, it's just it just sucks that it had to end this way. Just a couple more questions for our student athletes. We'll go to Aaron on Zoom. Aaron, your question. Uh, Aaron Brightman on the banks. Um, this is for Ron. Um, you know, you've talked in the past about the importance of representing New Jersey and and showing kids that you know Rutgers is a place that you can go to the NCAA tournament. How proud are you of the way this team has performed and just you know? been able to do what you've done the last couple of years, despite the loss, um, you know, playing the, the way you have? Uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of be the kid that started a trend, you know, go to Rutgers, you can go to the NCAA tournament. And I feel like uh, I did a good job of that, but it would have never been possible without the guys to my left, to my right, the guys in that locker room. Um, growing up, all I ever wanted was somebody to respect me, somebody to tell me I'm good enough. And I found that here at Rutgers, you know, uh, I found a group of guys that believed in me, that trusted me, and that's all I could ever ask for, man. Uh, these guys made me the player I am today. These guys made me an All-American. These guys got me all those individual accolades, and it sucks that I had to end like this, but, you know, I love these guys. Like Caleb says, Unbreakable Brotherhood. And we started something special up here. It's kind of like sitting next to the, like the three pioneers, you know. We did it three years in a row. I don't care what anybody says. COVID happened, we would have been right there in the mix. So we did that three years in a row, and not a lot of schools can say that they did that, especially not making it for 30 years. So I'm proud of the culture that we built. I'm proud of everything that we did. It sucks that we came up short, but these last four years is something I'll remember for the rest of my life, and I'll cherish, and I'll hold close to me. All right, two more questions for our student athletes. Uh, first row. Gary Carino from Gannett, New Jersey. Guys, what do you want to say to Rutgers fans who have become so invested in this team in a, in a way which never really happened before? Thank you. None of this is ever possible without the fans. They made New Jersey Mike's Arena one of the hardest places in the country to play at. And we're just so grateful for them. Ever since I stepped on this campus my freshman year, they've been all, all aboard on Rutgers basketball. And, you know, uh, I, f I hope you made them proud. I know we came up short today, but we put our we put our heart and soul on the line for this university, for that block R that we wear proudly. And we just want to thank them for all the support, you know, all the ups and downs. They kept showing up. So, you know, we love the fans, and none of this is ever possible without them. All right, last question for our student athletes right here. From Ron Fonseca, NJ.com. Uh, Ron, Caleb, I know you guys just came off an emotional game. You're not thinking about your future right now, but there's some finality to the way you guys are talking. Is this the end for you guys? Is, are you guys calling it a college career after tonight? I mean, right now, I'm worried about right now. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know what the future holds. American, um, so um, they're going to have a lot of opportunities to do a lot of different things. But I don't know if today is right now is the time to, you know, after a game like that, to be, you know, talking about those kind of things. But I appreciate these guys, what they've given to our program and what they've given to our university. They're just great, they're great students, they're great people, and um, you saw them fight tonight. And um, it's not, it's not easy. The whole season, back against the wall a lot of times, and they just did nothing but respond. And today. You know, proud. You know, we were two points short and double overtime to a good Notre Dame team. Uh, but these guys have laid it on the line for a long time, and they came to Rutgers when Rutgers wasn't you know, fashionable, and they built a culture that's terrific. And they'll have a lot of decisions when you're good like they are. They'll have a lot of decisions to make down the road. So they'll make great ones. They got great families, and they got a great you know support system. Ron, Gio, uh, Caleb, uh, out outstanding. Uh, congratulations uh, on a terrific season. And uh, you gentlemen are, are, are allowed to leave. But uh, thank you again for that performance in the arena. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Coach say so. All right, we we will uh we'll, we'll open the floor now to 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 head coach uh, Steve Peichel as uh, let's go in the back uh, fourth row. Zach Brazil in your post. Steve, when you look at the the defensive end tonight, 58 points in the paint, 51 percent shooting. Was it more of just Notre Dame pl played really well, or do you think your defense wasn't what it usually is? Yeah, I think we played really well too. Um, but um, we tried to take away threes. I thought we did a decent job of that. But they got into the paint. They finished some plays. But they want to shoot threes is what they really want to do. But it wasn't our regular defense. It wasn't. Um, we didn't get any kills. That's three stops in a row. We usually get a lot of them during the course of a game. But, uh, you know, we needed a big stop at the end. We didn't get it. Uh, but we had some other big plays during the course of the game that could have changed the tide. But this is college basketball this year. It's been like that for us all year long, two-point games, one-possession games. You know, proud the way our team played. That's a good team. They played well, too. I thought we played well. This may be the best game of the whole tournament. Um, and it was played high-level basketball game. It's a high-level program in Notre Dame, and we're a high-level program. Let's go to the third row. Steve, hi, Steve Politi, Angelicom. I can't remember a more gutting press conference. I'm, I'm just wondering if what the emotion was like in that locker room, and how, as a coach, you know, do you handle that? What did you say to them after this one? Yeah, I mean, I just told, I've been saying this all year. This is 30 years of coaching. I've never had a group like this. They've been, I mean. We didn't have a bad day of practice in the whole year. I mean, this group has been flat out special. It's by far my best team, by far my best team. And uh, since I've been at Rutgers, um, they've given it. They've played with their backs to the wall. We played in the best league in the country. We had to win games down the stretch. We had to win early games. And, uh, you know, it was really tough. Ralph's been great, came in and gave us Luke Nathan. Don't talk about him enough and what he's given to the program, gave him a scholarship. Um, that's how valuable I thought he was. A locker room, obviously, Gio coming back and Ron coming back and, you know, Caleb taking himself from being a, a player that's, you know, one of the best defenders in the country and obviously saw him being able to score today. Um, and Paul Mulcahy, three, three years he's been with us. We hadn't been to the NCAA tournament in 30 years, hadn't won a game in 38 years, and he's gone to three straight. Um, Cliff getting better and better. You know, but in our bench, too, the guys have just been great. They don't complain. They come to work. It's the toughest league in the country. Tough game today, but it was it was sad. It was a sad locker room, and uh, they put it all on the line. They fought the whole time, and that's what this group has done for three years. They fought, and I'm uh, proud of them, you know, for that. But uh, Coach Calhoun reminds me all the time, only one team's going to leave this March Madness happy. Fortunately. I think this team, I want to coach this team forever. So, S sad locker room. We're running out of time here, but let, let's let's go to the third row. Uh, Craig Epstein, then I, then I report. Uh, Steve, after such a crazy game like that, what's your message to the Rutgers fan base? I mean, the Rutgers fan base been awesome. And if they can't root for this team, this is as good a group of guys and a good team. And the Rutgers fan base is awesome. So, mm, I think they're real proud of where this program is evolved to. We were 14th when I first took over the job. We didn't have any winning streaks, didn't have any postseason bids, didn't have any of that. And they've done an unbelievable job, finished fourth in the best league in the country. So um, Our fan base has been great. I got a great athletic director who supports us and it's a great job. The president of the university supports us and, you know, and uh, we're going to continue to be a good basketball program and We'll continue to work hard as a staff. Our players will continue to develop. We've done as good a job developing guys as any program, I think, in the country. And, uh, you know, Rutgers Nation will be there. They'll be selling out games at Jersey Mike's and continue that tradition. So I'm thankful for our following. Uh, Aaron, your question to Coach. Aaron Brightman on the banks. Coach, I, I know it's um, – a tough moment, but I, I did want to ask just in terms of the three seniors, uh, Caleb, Ron, and Gio, um, you know, how proud are you of them just in terms of, you know, how they went out swinging? They all have had huge moments in this game and obviously to, to end their uh, potentially in, at their careers, um, but just the way that they played tonight and, and indicative of their whole careers at, at Rutgers. Yeah, it really is indicative of their whole careers. And, you know, thankful too for Ralph and, and Luke Nathan. They were awesome too. But, um, those guys have, you know, from day one, 
you know, swung punches. Gio was the 400th ranked recruit in the country. No one expected him to even play in the Big Ten. He ended up having an elite career. Um, Dean's a student. Ron, he's an All-American. Caleb, the defensive player of the year in the league. So um, those guys just kept improving. Um, they kept fighting for the program. They kept fighting for themselves. They come from great families. Um, so, you know, real proud, real proud. And their best basketball is ahead of them, too. That's what I'm most proud of. They're going to continue to do great things in basketball. First double overtime game in first four history. Coach, I know you're on a losing end, but that was a tremendous performance by your team. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being here, too. Appreciate it.